This podcast is part of the Soul Zone Network. Hello, hello, it's Molly and Sarah from the ButterflyConnection.com. We are all connected and we are not alone. What if you could rebirth your soul, spark movement in your life, and reconnect with your authentic self? Join us each week as we connect with Source to answer the burning questions that lie deep within us and gain clarity and wisdom to soar to our greatest potential. Welcome to the Butterfly Connection, where the kinetics of your soul will give you wings to fly. This is BK28, honoring the dead. Hello, hello, it's Molly and Sarah. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in with us this week. Yes, happy Halloween. And today, we thought it would be very fitting to have a conversation about honoring the dead. What does Halloween look like to you? Do you honor the dead on Halloween? Is this just a time for your kids to get dressed up and eat lots of candy? Or a time for you to get dressed up and go to Halloween parties? Or is this a time where you're really focusing on honoring your loved ones? So we're going to talk a little bit about how we can go about honoring our loved ones on this special day and how we can honor our loved ones who have crossed every day. Yes. And as Molly and I were talking about this before we started to podcast, we talked about so many different cultures and how each culture honors their dead in a different way. The movie Coco comes to mind about uh, the Day of the Dead and how they in the movie show how their dead is honored or not honored, and how even in different religions and belief systems in our own country, how everyone honors the dead in their own way. And it's just so amazing to see how the different cultures and how all of us have our own very distinct way in which we do that, whether it be keeping a memento of that person Whether we had a loved one who was cremated and we have their ashes, or we have a picture that we hold dear. And there's just so many beautiful ways that we can honor our dead. And it's just awesome to see how different cultures do that. Yes, it is awesome to be able to read articles about how everyone goes about honoring their loved ones who have passed. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about this too. I think the question also to be asked is, do you even believe there is an afterlife when our loved ones cross over? Now, for Sarah and I, we do believe that there is an afterlife. We do believe that when you die, your soul leaves your body and basically crosses over into a different plane of existence. Some people call that heaven. Some people call that what I just called it, a different plane or a different realm or just a different time and space of energy. So regardless of how you may or may not see it, or if you don't believe, perhaps our perspective today will give you some things to think about. Yes. And the other thing I'd like to mention too is even if you don't 100% believe in what happens after you die, or if you are skeptical about ghosts or spirits. I, I still believe, though, that we can all draw comfort in our own way. And there are lots of symbols and signs that can happen after you lose someone that you love in a butterfly flying across your face or seeing a cardinal fly in and sit down on your stoop, your house. And though Molly and I have our own specific perspective, there is something to be said about 
even if you aren't sure what's going to happen when you cross or when you pass away, it's that feeling that you get when you remember them. It's that feeling you get when you think of a memory. So I just want to make a a small mention of that, that even if you don't necessarily believe in a spirit world or another realm, we can honor our loved ones in so many ways through our memories and through the feelings that we get that are evoked when we think about them. So that's something that's important to know as we move forward with what we're going to talk about today. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And that's a really great perspective. In general, how do we honor our loved ones? And this is where I think memories are so important. When you make memories with others, you have those forever. We spend a lot of time at holidays, especially Christmas, which is coming up, or even Halloween with the candy, giving with more like material things where we're we're spending money on things. But really, the essence of all holidays should be centered around making memories with the people in your life who are important to you, whether it be your family, whether it be friends, just whoever has an impact in your life. The memories are what stay with you. I always say, I don't remember the things that I received as gifts when I was a child. But I remember the things that happened. I remember the good memories that I have with loved ones that have crossed over. And that is so meaningful and such an important thing to be able to hold and cherish in my heart. And I certainly hope that anyone else who has lost a loved one can think back on all of the wonderful memories and bonding experiences that you were able to have with them. Yes, I'm thinking of one exact example of that, Molly. Just a few days ago, I lost a very dear friend of mine, and she was also my voice teacher when I was in high school. And interestingly enough, a few days prior to her passing, a memory came up in my mind. I was talking to somebody about her, and I was reminiscing about just how an amazing woman that she was and how jovial her spirit was. And a few days later, we found out that she had passed from cancer. And in speaking about this today, I'm reminded of the fact that even when you don't see someone for a very long time but was very special to you in your life, if a memory pops up about them or you see something and it reminds you of them, I feel like that's that's their way of, of saying hi, saying, hey, I see you and I'm here. So when that happened, I thought, wow, I had just thought of her. She had just passed away and I was really, really sad. But at the same time, though she's passed on, those memories of her, like Molly said, last forever, will last through my lifetime, will last into my child's lifetime because I will tell him my memories of her. Honoring someone is not just remembering them, but it's passing them on through so that they can be remembered forever. If you believe in a soul and you believe that the soul lives on, you also can understand, too, that the memory of someone is like a legacy. So that person never really goes away as long as you carry on the memory. And also, live in their example. Like, my friend was the most amazing human being, and she was just so loving and so kind to everybody. And we can honor the people that have passed on by repeating or continuing those experiences that we had. So the idea of living forever is is leaving a legacy so that you are imprinted onto the hearts of everybody around you. Thank you for sharing that. So I'm going to shift the the conversation a little bit to talking more about my perspective of what it looks like when someone passes over and how we can 
talk to children about death in a way that is not scary because death should not be scary. And for me, speaking of loved ones passing over, my grandmother just passed away several weeks ago and I had to explain to my children about death. Now, before I go there, the amazing thing for my kids is they are still very much awakened and aware and capable of seeing spirit. It's something that I believe we all have the capability of when we're younger. However, sometimes it can be a little scary to see someone who's crossed over and then we kind of shut off that ability. And for me, I set the intention that I wanted my children to really learn that it's not something to be fearful of and to learn how to be able to speak with them in a way that says, hey, you can't be in my bedroom in the middle of the night because it scares me and you're invading my space. So my mother-in-law passed away two months before I got pregnant. And when my kids were born and were a little bit older and more aware, I ended up showing them a picture. They were about 18 months old of their grandmother. It was an ornament we made on the Christmas tree. And right away, they said, Grandma, which they've never said before, and kissed the picture and carried it around all day. They talked about her as if they knew her. And ironically, the more I would take video of them, the more I would see orbs flying in. And one day, I literally freeze-framed the orb, and you could see my mother-in-law's face very clearly. Curls, her distinct face shape, her distinct eye shape, everything in this orb. And the kids all the time just talked about her. They have a special name for her called Doc Doc. And all the time they'd be like, Doc Doc's here. Doc Doc's talking to us. Doc Doc's playing with us. So for me, I always made that seem as if it was just a typical thing. When she came to visit them. It was nothing abnormal or scary or anything like that. If she woke them up in the middle of the night, I would very kindly ask, you can keep watching over the kids, but please don't scare them. Do it in a way that they aren't waking up in the middle of the night and seeing your face. So when I look at how they're viewing death and loved ones coming back to visit them, to me, it's comforting because I know from all of the evidence of the orbs and what they're talking about, that she is definitely coming back. And we have other family members that come back and visit as well. My grandmother recently passed, and I had to explain that to the children. Right away, I said to them, do you know how Doc Doc is up in heaven and she comes to visit you? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, and my grandmother, we called her Gaka. And I said, well, Gaka is now going to be in heaven with Doc Doc. And I they asked me more like what what really is death and dying? And I said that the way I view death is the bodies that we live in, the vessel that we live in on this earth that our souls live in doesn't last forever and eventually it's no longer time for it to be alive. The body part. So when our bodies die, our souls leave the body, and go to heaven. And my kids looked at me and said, okay, and gave me a big hug because I was crying. I just moved on. And I thought, wow, I wish when I was seven that I could view death that way. That, all right, well, we're just, the body is expired. The soul has moved on to heaven to where it's going next. And they're going to still come down and visit me. And all right, I'll just see them differently. It was just an awesome thing to be able to witness as a parent actively trying to raise my children awakened. Wow, thank you so much. That's such a cool story about that. You know, it's interesting, it being the month of Halloween, this month I also had some conversations with my son regarding death. And I just feel so blessed that I'm able to give him a perspective as well that allows him to not feel fearful of it. 
because it is just one more step in our soul's journey. But his question to me was, Mommy, what happens after you die and you go to heaven? And I said, well, you pretty much just get to hang out with all of your loved ones. And you, and then he asked about our dog, Cosmo, that had passed a few years ago. Well, do, do I get to see him? And I'm like, yeah, you get to see who, whomever you want to see. And, and they'll all be there. And he goes, well, but what if I don't want to stay in heaven? Now, mind you, my son is five. And I am blown away at this point by his question. And I say, well, and this is where my belief comes in. Um, I believe that when your soul crosses and you go to heaven, at that point in time, you can choose whether you want to come back in another lifetime to, to continue your soul's journey to learn more lessons and grow your soul. So I explained to him, I said, well, you can choose to stay in heaven with all of your loved ones, or you can come back to earth. And you can live out another life and, and meet new people and fall in love all over again. And he said, oh, well, will you live in the same house? <laughs> and I said, no, you'll probably live in a whole different place and you'd be a whole different person. But your soul would be the same soul that you've always had. And he went, oh, OK. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was five years old, I don't know that I would have understood that or whether I would have even asked the question at all. So th this generation is truly remarkable in their ability to understand and know things and just live this amazing, beautiful life in such a positive, curious way. Completely agree, Sarah. And I think it is so important that we are having conversations like this with our children, regardless of what age they're at, because they do have questions. They are curious. They are inquisitive. They want to have a deeper knowing and understanding of how life works and how death works and how our souls, what, what happens with our souls. And I feel like a lot of times they have a lot of the answers. However, I do believe that when we do choose to come back down here to learn our lesson, there are a lot of things that we forget because that's part of the journey when we come back down here, that we're not meant to remember everything that we've already learned. But I think it's fascinating how we have the ability to be able to start to pull back out the things that we have learned in past lives and just be able to find that deeper inner knowing of what our souls souls do know as we start to remember those things. And I wanted to add with what you're saying about your son's inquisitiveness about death that my one daughter, she gave me the most fascinating perspective about what happens when people do cross over. I had asked her after my grandmother's death if she had seen her yet. This was probably two or three days after she died. And she said, no, I haven't seen her yet. She's settling in. And I said, oh, she's settling in. And she's like, yeah, she's settling in. She, she's visiting with everybody up there right now. And I said, oh, I didn't realize that. She's like, yeah, and we're not on her schedule yet. I said, you're not on her schedule yet. I didn't realize she had a schedule. And she goes, oh, yeah, she has a schedule. She goes up and visits everybody up there first. And then she comes back down and visits the adults. And then she visits the kids. So we have to wait until we're on her schedule for that. And I thought to myself, that is the most fascinating perspective of what happens when we cross over. And for me, it made complete sense. And I was so honored to be able to have heard that information from her. And she spoke to me about that in a way like, why wouldn't you know that? That's what happens. She just had an, an inner knowing and she just, she spoke from what she knew in such a candid way. It, it was the most fascinating conversation I've had in quite some time regarding death and what that looks like. That is so incredible. It's just, they are like 
the most amazing teachers to us, aren't they? Absolutely. So on this Hallow's Eve, how will you remember our loved ones that have passed? How will you honor those that have gone on from this life? And however you honor those, just know that they know that that is happening. And whether or not you see spirit, feel spirit, hear spirit, is entirely up to where you're at in your journey. But the most important thing, I think, that we can do as alive people is to take the time out today and every day to remember, to speak of them, and to honor them. Absolutely. And also remember, if you have young children in your life, if you are a parent or an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent or a teacher or any capability or anything where you have a young person in your life, remember that you can also talk to them about honoring the dead and in ways in which that that can be done because they are just as interested and capable of hearing it and understanding it. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us today in this discussion about honoring the dead. And we hope that you have a fantastic Halloween. Please come over to our Facebook group and chat with us. And, you know, we're also on Instagram and Pinterest. And we have, of course, our soul challenge, our soul reflection challenge, where you can get on our Teachable site and um, you can work through our journal exercises with every single podcast we do each week. And you can sign up because we're going to start offering a newsletter with the upcoming classes that we have. So go ahead to our website and sign up, subscribe to our email list so that you can receive our newsletter. Yes. And thank you so much again for tuning in. Have a blessed week full of love and light. And happy Halloween. Thank you for listening to The Butterfly Connection with Molly Ray and Sarah Courtney. Look for Soul Reflections Academy on our website, thebutterflyconnection.com, and sign up for our free Soul Reflection Challenge. We would love to hear from you. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play and give us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And join us next week for another Soul Connecting Conversation. Thank you for listening to The Butterfly Connection with Molly Ray and Sarah Courtney. Look for Soul Reflections Academy on our website, thebutterflyconnection.com, and sign up for our free Soul Reflection Challenge. We would love to hear from you. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play and give us a review. 
You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And join us next week for another soul-connecting conversation.